All right, let's get it going with sports and the law. The Rams will begin play back in Los Angeles in the 2016 season, but the fans in St. Louis aren't through with them yet. A lawsuit has been filed in St. Louis Circuit Court stating the Rams violated the state's Merchandising Practices Act. We'll try to explain it with Steve Moskowitz, our sports and the law expert here on Sports Talk Live. All right, so this lawsuit, Steve, is for people who bought tickets and merchandise over the last five years. Why do they think they have a case here? Wishful thinking, pie in the sky, they're going to lose. Here's the thing. You went there, you bought your jersey, it was the event. You have your jersey. Now you can't go and recover in a lawsuit because, wait a minute, the team is moving away to L.A., so my jersey is worthless. No, that's not the lawsuit that has the merit. Well, now hold on here because the owner and one of the top executives from the franchise, the Rams, when they were in St. Louis, the owner, Stan Kroenke, said publicly that they expected to stay in St. Louis. Didn't they defraud the contraire. Really? Uh, indeed, because what happened is he said, I'm trying my best, I would like to, I want to do everything I can. So number one, he never made a contract that he was going to stay. He said he was making his best efforts. And then what he did was he went ahead and blamed it on the stadium, which he said, well, you should just tear everything down after the renovations of a dozen years ago, but he has somebody else to point to. All right, so you're claiming that, that's the statement there. But there is another lawsuit that's making the good his way. way. The personal seat licenses, and this is from them, they, they, the owners of those in St. Louis, they want to retain their rights to Rams tickets in L.A. Explain how they can try to get away with this. They're not going to do that, but what they have a good case on is getting a refund because the problem is they went ahead and bought something that was good till 2025, and all of a sudden somebody says, buy. Well, wait a minute. You sold me this. So what I think is going to happen is they're going to have to refund the difference between now and 2025. But you're talking about going to L.A. That's a totally, forgive me, different ballpark <laughs> where you have different owners, you have different majorities, all, all types of things. The bottom line is they're not going to be able to use their personal seat license in L.A. So they, they thought, well, I've got this seat through 2025, so there's a 10-year window that I need my, my money back. This is a class action suit. Does that muddy the waters or make it even stronger? It's not that it muddies the waters, but what happens is now we have to have the judge approve any type of settlement, which it most probably be gets more attention, but that's going to be the bottom line. There's going to be a check written. All right, I want to put my glasses on for this next part because as the team moves from St. Louis to Los Angeles, uh, you've got you have your own glasses. See, with oh, a couple okay. of no, professionals to going toe to toe. Glasses on, I put glasses on. As they move, uh, player financing packages on moving. Will the Rams be forced to pay anything outside of the norm as players, not only players but even front office personnel, move from St. Louis to Los Angeles? Different cost of living. Under the collective bargaining agreement, they get the moving van and the storage. That's it. And arguments like, oh, it cost me more there, a lot of problems. First of all, we have a violation of the salary cap. And the next thing, my specialty, what the players should do is say, well, wait a minute. I can take a tax deduction for expenses away from home. They don't have to live in L.A., even though they'd be temporarily, they can rent a furnished apartment and then take a tax deduction for it, but they're not getting paid. As part of this, you have to go through the collective bargaining agreement. The NFL Players Association is saying that teams only have to pay the moving expenses and relo relocation expenses. Right. That's under the CBA. Even if the team wanted to, could they, would, that, would the CBA prevent them from helping anybody? Salary cap, because they'll say, well, wait a minute, wait a minute, you're giving these guys more compensation. The team's going to go back and say, gee, guys, we're really sorry. We'd like to give you more money, but you know what? Your union and the CBA, this is what you bargained for. This is what you got. Here you go. Stop your whining and crying. So the team will actually use the players' union against them. You bet they will. And all the while saying, we were hoping to help you with more. There's we not know a, it's tough. There's not a lot of things that are sure in life, Jim, but you better believe they're not giving them any more money than what's in that contract. I like it. So it's so the one that has a chance, oh, personal seat license. That's the good one. All right, we're going to keep an eye on that. That's Steve Moskowitz, our sports and law Always expert. Always a pleasure. Great uh, having you here next on Sports Talk Live. Presented by Comcast Business, before Steve Kirk can return to the bench, he has to address the media and will bring you his comments on the other side of the break.